Good evening. Thank you for attending tonight's public meeting on the art operations and maintenance facility. First, some ground rules. This particular meeting is being recorded. The presentation as well as the video will be posted to the project website after this meeting. While you're while others are speaking and while the presentation is ongoing, please ensure that you're muted and your video is off. There will be time for questions and answers at the end of this meeting. And from here, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Greg Shipley. Thank you. Great, thank you, Pierre. So I'm going to start off by just um, presenting um, the initial slides. I'm going to keep my camera off during the presentation just to make sure everything runs a little bit more smoothly. So what we're going to cover today is uh, we'll have uh, initial introductions of uh, the project team that we have on the line. We'll review the project and discuss the preliminary concept design. Finally, we'll touch on comments that we heard at our previous community session, and then what are the next steps? We have a big team on this project, a lot of uh, valued stakeholders. On the call tonight, appears Pierre certainly introduced himself. We also have uh, William Jones, Transit Services Manager, and John Muir with Arlington County for Facilities Design and Construction Manager. For the design consultants, uh, my name's Greg Shipley. I'm the project manager. I'm also an architect with Stantec Architecture. And Pete, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Pete Cloutier with Timmons Group. I'm the site engineer and will primarily be handling um, site grading, drainage, utilities, um, et cetera, for, for the project. We want to we want to remind everybody about the project page that's set up. And so we have a web link here where you can go check out what the latest is, find out when the next meetings are, where the location is. And if you have any questions or want to provide some feedback, there are some options to do so on that. In addition, um, we've set up a survey monkey link to provide feedback on the design elements that you see tonight, and that's going to be active until March 3rd. So this is the project timeline. We're at the beginning of the project. We're actually in phase two for schematic design, where we're trying to find out all the questions that we need answers to early on in the project before we get down into the construction documentation phase. So this is our second community meeting and as part of a, a three step public engagement process. In addition, we're going to have the construction manager at risk join the project here shortly and they are going to be um, a part of the design and they'll also oversee the construction. At our previous community meeting, we provided an introduction to the design team. We talked about the site challenges and constraints, and we shared some initial concept site layouts. We also heard a, uh, your different questions and provided some different, um, and we're going to continue to talk about those questions and our responses and how they were incorporated into the design. Some of the discussion points that we heard during our Q&A period last time included wanting to see more massing and exterior aesthetics, understanding the pedestrian experience, what are the emissions that are going to be on site. Um, we understand there's going to be future electrification of buses. How is that going to be handled? Sustainability, stormwater management, and more. I'll provide a brief overview that we went through previously, but for those new to the project, uh, I just want to provide a brief synopsis. So Arlington Transit has 16 different routes and it serves 3 million people uh, annually. In addition, it supports a lot of the major community and, and federal employers. So in the future, they're looking at not only ex expansion and providing more buses, but also more staff. And so this project will be critical in their continued success. Right now, there are four different facilities that they oversee. And on the bottom of this screen, you see the art maintenance building, which is located in Alexandria, which is kind of nine miles away, uh, nine deadhead miles. 
And so we're looking at incorporating those maintenance facilities at the uh, Sherlington, right by the Sherlington location where we'll show on our site. And so providing the maintenance building, maintenance operations a lot closer to the site will reduce a lot of um, lost time for drivers and provide convenience for, for Arlington. These two parcels were procured in, in 2018 and ART has been keeping their buses there. I think there are about 55 different buses on site since that time. Um, we were cr contracted and brought on board in September and we had our initial kickoff meeting in October. So through that time, we've been working on concept design, initial site layouts, and now we're starting to um, take the next step. So the project, uh, just a general overview, it, we're gonna have three types of building on site. We're gonna have a combined um, maintenance facility, which will actually have an operations function on top of it. We're also gonna have an administration facility adjacent to a structured parking space for um, uh, structured parking for personal vehicles. There's also going to be surface parking for buses, and we're going to be providing the infrastructure for the future, potential future electric powered buses. So there's going to be approximately 250 employees supporting this facility. Some of our goals, not only to continue to meet the needs of the community by providing uh, fantastic public transportation services, but also this is gonna be a state-of-the-art long-term facility. It's not every day you get to construct a facility of this nature. So we want it to be a resilient facility that's gonna be low maintenance, but highly aesthetic. To orient you on the site, we have 395 on the right-hand side of your screen, and then we have parcel A and parcel B and C. So these parcels are bisected by the Cube Smart Access Road off of, off of Sherlington Road. And we also have a stream tributary that's running alongside that, um, the access road as well. As far as the location, it's right in the middle of a light and industrial area. So it's the perfect zoning area for this. And again, we have 395 um, bounding us on the east side. This is the existing block massing on site. These are all extrusions of the, the Cube Smart. You'll see the new one is about a 70 foot structure, six stories. The existing one is almost 60 feet, plus it has four foot parapets. On the north side, which is on the left hand of your screen, you'll see the DC rental facility, which is a one story structure. And then there's an auto repair and a commercial facility, both on the north and the west side. So one of the, some of the things that we want you to pay attention to as you're watching the presentation include the various views of the facility. Are there any that resonate with you? Uh, the materiality, we're going to show different types of material from metal panels to precast concrete to um, having brick, a brick veneer on the facade. We're going to review different elements and we want you to be cognizant of the massing and the fenestration, which is um, the windows and openings of the facility. We're going to show different options that we're considering for photovoltaics. We're providing the infrastructure for the, the photovoltaics, and Arlington is pursuing a power purchase agreement to have them installed on site. Also look at the logo locations that we're showing, as well as the size of those. And then finally, the screening both of the parking structure and of the, the facility. So some of our design principles as we were working through our different concepts that we're going to present tonight include ensuring that this is going to be a, a common campus identity. We want these, even though it's bisected um, by the access road, we want this to feel like a common campus. We also know there's no backside of this facility. You're going to get views from 395 from Sherlington Road. So ensuring that all of the facades are, are mindfully um, rendered. 
And then finally, we want to really look at the different initiatives we're doing for sustainability and also, again, the material selection. So this is uh, the various locations where we've cited the buildings right now. We have the operations and maintenance building on the right-hand side, which is the east parcel, with bus parking behind it. And then on the west parcel, we have the administration building and parking structure. And this is how they look uh, with the other adjacent, the initial uh, block massing that we produced. So again, the parking structure and the administration building, all of these are, are uh, smaller than the, uh, the new CubeSmart that's being constructed. And then the operations and maintenance building in the background. So some of the key aspects of the site include, we have the major highways on uh, for 395 on the right-hand side. And then we have uh, Sherlington Road bounding on the on the west end of the site. And then we have the stream uh, tributary going right down through the middle. And of course that access road. So those are all different constraints that we're um, that we're going to be dealing with. One of the critical items again is the campus approach for for the project. We have the administration building, which is on the west parcel, but they require um, administration oversight, which is critical to the operations. So they need good views of both the operations area and the bus fleet. The operations area is going to be shown on this building B right now, which is the maintenance building. And they are on the third floor, which has a great view of, of all the uh, bus fleet to the south end of the site. We created four different stories, four different uh, visions that we could see this uh, facade, uh, the, the building um, coming into play here. So one of them is flow, another is frame, stitch, and permeate. And each has a little bit different story to them. So we're going to walk you through those. So for flow, we we took the vision of the stream that's bisecting the site and how can that play into the design of the facade. So we envision these two um, rocks, if you will, on either end of this free flow free flowing stream. And so th this is it from um, the massing put on site here. And we're gonna step a little closer here. This is the view from, um, from Sherlington Road as you approach the building. We have solids that emulate the solid parts of the site. And we, we break those up by providing uh, more of a fluid and open uh, system of fenestration. For the parking structure, we have um, a skin that's going to go in a vertical orientation, but it's a, a perforated metal panel. So it'll be a screening material, which will allow airflow through the parking structure. On the ground level, it's going to be more of a precast structure, a solid plinth for the building to sit on. You're going to have the major um, uh, major entrance to the facility and to the parking structure underneath the art symbol. So again, this is just provides a verticality of the structure. The pedestrian view is something that we're really paying attention to as well, making sure that we understand where the vehicular circulation is going as well as the pedestrian circulation. This is the view from 395. You can see that having the vertical oriented metal panels and screening also allow us to incorporate uh, photovoltaics in a similar rhythm and pattern on the facade. And seeing that from 395 shows that Arlington is really um, paying attention to the sustainability of the project. And having a solid mass on the on the bottom where all the buses are going to be located provides a resilient material. 
these are a couple different uh, views on the left hand side of your screen. You'll see the maintenance building and the various maintenance bays. There are eight different bays that are going to serve the fleet. We're also looking at opportunities for vegetative roof, for uh, photovoltaics on the on the roof as well, providing light monitors to get light uh, where the workers are in the facility. And then on the right hand side, you'll see a view coming up um, Sherlington Road. Another option that we want to review is frame. And this is looking at different framed views, not only a frame from inside the building, but also when you view the building from 395, you'll see these uh, framed appearances. And you can see on this particular image, we're looking at including um, photovoltaics over top of the um, parking structure, which would allow kind of a canopy structure up there as well. This is the view from Sherlington Road, having these screened frames that uh, at the parking structure. It still provides a lot of airflow, and having the frame itself allows for an opportunity to bring color onto the facade. And we also have um, kind of highlighted areas which provide wayfinding, ensuring that everybody understands where the front door of the facility will be. This is uh, the pedestrian view showing how the maintenance building and the administration building really have a similar uh, design language and articulation, making sure that they're seen together as a common campus. From 395, um, you see the framed view of kind of the operations area, which is on the third floor of the maintenance building, as well as um, into the different maintenance areas. Again, a few different views. Um, on the up on the top right, you'll see the um, canopy structure over top of. Uh, providing uh, photovoltaics over top of the parkings, um, the parking garage. And for Stitch, we wanted to, we looked at the community and, and saw the different um, industrial nature of the particular setting it's located in. And so we wanted to um, kind of stitch a modern industrial facility into the fabric of this community. This one uses a lot of um, masonry, brick masonry as the main veneer. And as you see from Sherlington Road, um, the brick acts as piers and breaks up the long facade. So introducing some verticality into the horizontal nature of the facility. The parking structure will still have screened elements. And we also have interplay of of different ways we can incorporate uh, light panels in into the stair tower and at the main entrance of the facility. Another view, the pedestrian view, uh, walking through this um, uh, modern industrial facility. And from 395, um, using an articulation to break up the the back part of the maintenance building, but also providing the verticality on on the administration building. And another few views again, looking at vegetative roofs, adding light monitors to get light to the workers, providing screening on the roof. And the last option we want to present tonight is uh, permeate. And so this is looking at the the different layers of the facility um, will provide kind of a forced perspective from 395 into this um, into this alleyway, and we want to want the administration building to almost mirror how the maintenance building is view is viewed. An overhead view again, looking at providing some solar. Uh, solar panels on top of the maintenance building and operations building. 
And this is that layered approach that I was talking about from uh, from Sherlington uh, Road. So that provides a screening and obscures the view of the parking structure, but it still has a solid base, which it's bound on. And then having the office spaces um, have similar elements to one another. And you'll see that in some of these next slides. With a pedestrian view, you see the um, different training rooms and operations area of the maintenance facility in, in the background. Then from 395, the dispatch area would have a, a kind of an overlook over top of the bus parking area. We'd also have uh, photovoltaics in a vertical orientation over top of uh, the maintenance bays. And a few different views that we're looking at on this facility. So those are the different concepts, and we'll have an opportunity during the Q&A period to go back and, and look at these four concepts together. So some of the questions that we heard last time um, included some several site discussion comments. So uh, Pete, if you wouldn't mind walking through some of those. Sure, no problem. <clears throat> um, so the site's uh, zone light industrial, um, it has a perennial stream uh, bisecting both parcels, uh, which has an RPA and known 100 year uh, water surface elevation flooding issues and some existing utilities that have to be coordinated with the site as well as the four mile run valley area plan um, stormwater management or stream um, impact uh, mitigation criteria. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here is the existing conditions which highlight in pink the RPA uh, is a resource protection area for those who don't know, um, the 100 year water surface elevation is in blue and we've highlighted the location of flooding at the uh, existing double barrel 48 inch culvert um, on the uh, northern part of the screen or the top part of the screen. And with this site, what we're trying to do is reduce the impact to the RPA, imp Prove the flooding condition at the existing culvert and ensure that the 100 year water surface elevation does not impact the future development of both parcels. So, what you're seeing here is a conceptual site layout with locations for a potential bioretention facility and stormwater management facility on the operation and maintenance facility, which will help mitigate uh, the increased or, or runoff from the site. And um, we also are looking into some other improvements to the channel and the culvert crossing as, as stated before to ensure that we don't have a negative impact on the existing stream. Great, thanks Pete. Definitely a complex site you'll have to deal with. Um, for sustainability, this will be a, a certified project. We're pursuing LEED Silver. Uh, we're gonna develop different strategies, both passive as far as how we're working with the uh, building envelope and making sure it's uh, uh, gonna be well insulated, as well as using active strategy, uh, including providing a solar ready facility so that we can bring in that power purchase agreement to have the PVs on the on the facility. We showed different examples of solar panels, whether they're vertical on the walls, on the roofs, acting as canopies. So love to hear some of your feedback. We're also providing the infrastructure for future bus charging. Um, 
this is the right time to do it, providing all the duct banks underneath to accommodate uh, future planning. It's never going to be less expensive than to than to do it right now, and it will be the least disruptive if we implement it now. So we need to be cognizant of where the spacing for the plug-in or structure for a gantry will be located, providing charging cabinets around the perimeter, and locating future generators. The vehicular circulation, um, we wanted to make sure that the bus parking was conflict free from any other vehicles. So the area in red, you see a counterclockwise bus circulation around the facility. We also have a, a safety zone by the repair bays. So the buses will drive to the north end of it and allows the good sight lines for buses exiting the uh, repair bays. In orange, you'll see the arrow going to the Cube Smart Access Road. And then in blue, all the vehicles that'll be entering into the maintenance building. So those will all peel off, allowing the buses to circulate on the east parcel. For pedestrian circulation, um, by having those different entities going into the different uh, facilities helps reduce the amount of traffic that the pedestrians leaving from the parking structure over to the maintenance building will have to encounter. So we're looking at different sidewalks um, to add to the facility, um, as well as providing fence lines and gates to make sure it'll be easy for pedestrians to get over to the maintenance building. This is just a, an, another view of the pedestrian safety ele elements that we're implementing into the project. So what are our next steps? Again, this is the project timeline. We're in quarter one. Um, this is the second of three meetings. So a good opportunity to show the, the various uh, progress that we've have to date. So what we wanted to do today was present the concepts that we're having uh, under, that we have under development. And we're, it, it's okay to mix and match different things if you like the screening that was done on one, but you like the um, uh, material that was used on another concept. So hearing that feedback would be great. And so you'll be able to provide feedback, not only during the question and answer period, but also online until March 3rd. So we also wanted to provide some of the highlights of previous comments that we've heard and just review the project to date. And we look forward to our next community meeting to provide a further update. So again, here are uh, here's the various team members that uh, you, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them. So at this time, I'll we're, we welcome any questions. We did have a few questions come in through the chat, Greg, um, which I know you can't see because you probably got the presentation up. Um, but Juan asks um, if there is a fence around the around the site. There is a, a fence that's going to be around the perimeter of the site. Um, the buses need to be protected, and certainly since 9/11, that's uh, a major. Um, uh, item that's been implemented on all bus parking facilities or, or bus fleet facilities, making sure that the fleet is protected from uh, from anybody who may want want to do harm. So I see hands going up. Yeah, we've got a question oh. from John. You can go ahead, John. Uh, hi, John Bloom. I'm uh, chair of the Potomac River Group Sierra Club that covers uh, this area. And um, I guess my question is about um, the, the sustainability targets 
for both buildings. Um, and I'm assuming that the the um, office building is is actually going to comply with the the uh, facility sustainability uh, regulation that that calls for net zero because I'm assuming that would be pretty easy to do, but that that's much harder to do with the the uh, maintenance facility. So I wanted to confirm confirm that and then talk a little bit about or ask a question or two about the maintenance facility and its target, which I gather is is lead silver. Right. Yes. Um, accurate on both points. Um, the the target of the project is lead silver, and we are going to be having a, a net zero ready facility. Um, the one item that we're looking at right now are is uh, generators onto the site using natural gas generators as a backup facility uh, as a backup um, power. So as part of that, uh, we're working with our lead consultant who's um, uh, just when when natural gas is brought on site, they've had some some issues with how it's characterized, um, even though it's a backup system. Since there, since gas is being brought on site, it's playing differently into lead. But so if we have an electric power um, for the RTUs um, and the PVs that we're bringing on as a renewable energy source is feeding that and providing that net zero capability, is the generator um, going to be an issue? So that's something we're exploring right now. But John, that is the goal to have a net zero ready facility for the administration building and then for the maintenance building um lead silver and i i guess my question about the if you could explain a little bit more about what goes into lead silver is as a target because you know in in the the um the facility you know public facility um uh, administrative reg you know, does allow for lead silver, but it's really, you know, it's the lowest level and it, it urges, it, it specifically talks about um, uh, striving to go above the minimum. And in this case, the languages were, were targeting silver and it just sounds like, you know, is that just as high as this facility can possibly get? And, you know, what are the constraints and, uh, uh, because I, you know, I, you know, frankly, it just sounds like this is where the the energy use is going to be really intense, and so that's where we're most concerned. Right. Um, that silver is absolutely the uh, the minimum requirement as part of this project, and I, I had a similar project with Washington Gas where a few years ago up in Rockville, Maryland, where we did a maintenance facility for them. Their old facility had burned down. And we were targeting silver and and overachieved and uh, and and reached gold. So we're not we're not going to stop. <laughs> at, we want to make sure this is a, a sustainable facility. And some of the items that we're looking at um, not only include all the different. It's a it's an urban area, so we have an opportunity to to get a lot of the sustainable site credits. Um, but we're also looking at using renewable energy on site and um pete was uh, sharing some of the stormwater strategies to make sure that we have both the quantity and the quality of the stormwater um, off the site so there are a bunch of different items we're employing including looking at a vegetative roof on the facility not only for as an amenity for the workers there but also maybe as part of the stormwater strategy to reduce uh, runoff uh, any any comments so far on the outlook for uh, an electric heating system for this building? I know it's hard in a in a building with um, with bays and and that fire stations have done it in some places and and have had more trouble in others and they keep you know that just seems like an area where the uh, what's on the market in terms of heating uh, systems keeps keeps evolving. 
uh, what's the outlook here? So for the maintenance bays, we're looking at a radiant system. And there are two different types you can use, uh, either overhead radiant heaters, which are generally gas powered um, in some facilities uh, out in out in um, Fairfax, we were able to tie into the landfill and get methane uh, gas. But at this facility, we're looking at radiant floor um, in slab heating. So when you have the repair bays with bridge cranes, all of a sudden you have this big volume of 25 plus feet. And we want to provide the heat where the workers are and that six foot from the from the finished floor elevation. So having the in slab heat is is the approach that we're pursuing right now. And the uh, uh, is it possible? Is that possible with um, gas or electricity or or uh, only with gas or now? yeah? Right right now for the maintenance building, it's looking. Uh, we're going to be doing a life cycle cost analysis as part of this. So right. we have to provide a pros and cons of different systems. So I don't want to exclude anything at this point, but those are just kind of early thoughts that we have. Okay, glad glad to hear that about the life cycle cost analysis. Yeah. That uh, you know raises a whole nother discussion of uh, building materials and concrete um, usage and so on. But we, we can save those for another day. Right. Yeah, so thus far, we've already had a sustainability workshop where everybody shared their goals and um, early approaches, and we've had equipment meetings on the HVAC systems with the facilities group to make sure that we're providing um, the type of systems they want in their facilities. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks. And then Greg, I think there's a there's another question from Pawn here in the chat, and then a request to go back to the um, options where we see all four on the screen. Okay, I'll start to. And then the there's a question about uh, I think the question is, will you be able to see your buildings from uh, the east of 395? Will there be views across 395? Um, as far as providing um, developing massing of views, I'm sure we could produce those. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, that our main, the, we went through, these are all developed in SketchUp at the moment, which is a, a massing software program. And we're, we're taking them into another software program called Revit, where we're going to further um, start to prep them for the construction documents. So we have the ability to create so many different views of the, the massing. So any any view you can imagine, we can, we can produce. Um, it's just when we start to go too far out, then we have to render all the other buildings. So that's been fun today, trying to make sure that we're accurately depicting the height and size and scale of the neighboring buildings on site. Luckily, we've had been able to get some drawings on those other facilities. So yeah, Juan, if you have any specific view that you have in mind, yeah, just feel free to add that to the chat or follow up um, online. So folks can either feel free to raise a hand to ask a question, put a question in the chat. Um, and I know we have a few folks joining by the phone. If you're joining by the phone to unmute, you hit star six. So I just wanna make sure we share that with folks too.
John, your hands up. It is indeed up again. Yeah. Uh, just sure. one more question on the sustainability side. Um, there's a administrative regulation 4.4 that um, has been around for a, a long time and called for an environmental assessment um, at a uh, to be brought to the the Climate Change, Energy, and Environment Commission. And I understand that that's that the process is being somewhat reworked, and that the idea was to um, you know to basically create a document and and provide a document to the public at a relatively early stage of design uh, that could be a trigger for a conversation with um, like the Environmental Commission or or others. And I'm just wondering if there's been any discussion of you know of either um doing an environmental assessment which is basically a form and then and then bringing that to uh, the environmental commission um, or something like it uh i am not familiar with that right now john i, I think i'm gonna have to get back to you on that um but one of the good things with stantec is um we have the capability in house to do that and our laurel office has folks that not only do environmental assessments so, but um hey Greg, yeah. you, can i just jump in uh, yeah, about that hi uh this is june locker we have been working with our uh des counterparts who manage facilitate this we're working through how we're going to do the assessment um and then bringing it to e2c2 so we are we, we haven't worked out the the details yet but um we can get back to um to you and to you know the the community on the exact um process but they are redoing it revamping it and just we're just trying to work out the the details of what needs to be submitted okay so more I to come just wanted to make sure it was in the mix because it sounds like you're getting close to the point where uh you know something along that line uh, uh, might be appropriate under you know under the new scenario that i understand is being developed thanks june great thanks june. we'll be we'll provide more yeah So June, you just dropped in the chat that the PFRC meeting is tomorrow. Did you want to say more about that? And I can try and pull up a link. Yes, so I just wanted to remind every it, the, it will be similar content, but if I, I noticed that a few people had joined a little bit late, so didn't get to see the full presentation of the four options or the four concepts that uh, Greg had reviewed. So um, again, this is also going to be online, posted online, so you can look at that way, but also PFRC is tomorrow. And if Aaron, if you could just put the link up if anyone's interested in joining. I think I have that handy. Oh, looks like you're you're already on top of it, Aaron. Thanks.
All right, and Aaron, I saw you also plugged the uh, project page on the meeting chat, so another opportunity to engage on the project. Yeah, absolutely. And so we'll put this presentation up, which goes over these concepts that we have here on the screen in more uh, detail. And then we'll also be putting up um, once we wrap here. Yeah, this presentation, so the slide deck, so you can see all of that in detail, this presentation, and then also um, an online feedback form. And I'm actually just going to plug that in the chat here, too. Um, that will go up. It's live, but it's right now. Um, not yet on the project page, but I'll share it here because I'm going to put it up there right after we conclude and our meeting here tonight. Were there any other questions that folks had for us right now? Otherwise, I think we might wrap up for the evening. I'm getting a chat from somebody that says that they want to there. So the online feedback form is going to ask you sort of what your sort of overall conceptions are about these sort of options that we have here. And then I think Greg mentioned earlier, but I think it bears repeating that we're not sort of looking at a pick one and we take everything from it right right now. We're kind of the team did a really good job of putting together concepts that have different kinds of expressions of how we could handle different elements. Um, so if there's, you know, you like the windows on a building, um, in one concept or you like the material that's used on another, um, then those are things we can sort of consider together. Um, but yeah, we definitely want your feedback on sort of what we can, how we can have this really neat, um, neat art facility come online. Yeah, that's spot on, Aaron. Um, we wanted to make sure that we showed different types of approaches, uh, very different from one another. and. And then when we start to um, develop one, it's going to, it's not going to stop here. We're going to continue to refine it throughout the de design development stage. So thanks for reminding everybody about the different options and it's okay to like parts of one and parts of another. So hearing that there are no additional questions, I would like to thank everyone who participated tonight. As noted, this pre presentation and video will be posted to the project site. Uh, there it will be information in regards to the survey that was noted in the chat. So thank you all um, and have a great evening. All right, good night everybody.